Baltimore Ravens 24, Tennessee Titans 16. Uh, Tottenham. It's over down there. <laughs> down over Tottenham. Yeah. Ben and Gordon were there. Ben and Gordon were at the game. Uh-huh. Oh, that's great. Were they live grade? It was, uh, ben was definitely just like, you know, he's got it in his brain. Live grade, and he's over there watching the O-line. He's like, there's a point I didn't five, know. there's a minus one. I didn't know we let him away from his office on a Sunday. I know. That's, that's true. I guess for an island game, it's doable. Hopefully he got back in time right. for the actual games. Well, it's good to know that they, uh, that they got out and had some fun. Uh, Ravens 24, Titans 16. Titans um, still 0-3 at home here. At home. Uh, Ravens 4-2. and two. Titans fall to ten and four. Sorry, it was the first home loss for right, the Titans the other way. officially. Usually, that's but, what that's what I meant to but say. But it doesn't count. Because um, but four losses all the way from Nashville here. Ryan Tannehill gets hurt during the game. Uh, weird game. Nine hundred field goals for mm-hmm. the Ravens. Malik Willis has to come in late and gets sacked on four out of nine dropbacks. Pretty standard fare from Malik Willis. <laughs> um, before we get into it, it's uh, it looks like a high high ankle sprain for Ryan Tannehill. As we know, that's when the ankle turns in instead of out. And um, Have you confirm that on the uh, the boo boo breakdown. I uh, I think so. You know, you know how I watched the old Jags games. Oh yeah. And when Mark Brunell had this ankle injury in 1998, they cut to Leslie Visser when he was coming back from it, and it was Leslie who taught this to teenage me that the high ankle is the turn in instead of the turn out. Hmm. So it's on her. Okay. I saw this recently when I was rewatching like a 1998 game or whatever. That's anyway, let's get from. into how the Ravens won 24-16. to Yeah, I mean, they were the better team for the entire game. And then for a brief period of time, it felt a little bit like the Steelers game a week ago where it's like, uh-oh, it's somehow going to unravel again. Yeah, and this, keep it a minute. Right, just because they keep taking a field goal at the end of all these, they're not actually getting away. And, you know, eventually the Titans are actually going to somehow pull this out. Didn't end up happening, but it got close. Um, We got more punter talk. One of the best plays by a punter all season. Ryan Stonehouse, Tennessee Titans punter. Yeah, go on. Good punt. It felt like a good punt. I haven't checked the hang time on it, but the direction, the distance was great. Um, Pins Devin Duvernay deep into his own territory. Great return by Duvernay. Takes it right up the middle. Uh, good job by the, the the corners, the vices on the coverage team as well. And he scored. Only he didn't because Ryan Stonehouse ran him down. You get run down by a punter. Look at you. Giving, giving love to the punters. You're listening to the people in the Discord. Good work by Ryan Stonehouse. Or at least the one guy. Um, Ravens offense looked pretty sharp early on, but they just could not put the ball in the end zone, right? It did. You said it, it felt like the... Steelers game, where the Ravens are moving the ball up and down the field. Lamar Jackson really sharp, especially in the first half, and uh, just couldn't put it in. Zay Flowers with his first NFL touchdown, and uh, on a little scramble drill there. But the there were a couple big plays, Nelson Aguilar, Odell Beckham Jr., Mark Andrews, a few big plays in there. <laughs> Poor Harold Landry on that play, by the way, the touchdown. Like, Harold Landry has somehow found himself matched up one-on-one with Zay Jones, just sprinting for his life to keep pace. Flowers. Oh, sorry, yeah. Flowers, yeah. Keeping pace uh, with a wide receiver who then, like, just 180 degrees because it's, it's a scramble drill, turns and, like, runs into space. And Landry's just no shot, none. Yeah, not much you could do there. I mean, that's, but it, that's what it felt like in the first half, right? The Ravens offense moving the ball. Lamar was you know, hit his first seven, eight, nine passes, whatever that was. Um, the, the Ravens offense, to me, does feel very, um, I don't want to say horizontal, but – you do have to cover the entire field, I think, with this Ravens offense versus previous years. They, they have the same element of downhill running, power, counter, where you know the offensive line's getting downhill, you're getting guys into space, but there's also a much bigger horizontal element with more jet sweep type action, screen game and everything. Uh, they just have to figure it out in the red zone and, and finish a little bit. Like, you know, as, as you said, this is kind of like what, what kept Tennessee in this game and for the Titans, it was just a couple. They were very inconsistent on offense. It was the complete opposite. They were not getting anything going. And then you've got a 63-yarder from Derrick Henry, a uh, 48-yard you know, pass by Malik Willis to Ty J. Spears. It was just a couple big plays for the Titans, but, uh, but just not enough. And big penalties. Um, that, you know, that kept Tennessee in it for a while. Like A couple of big high-leverage penalties, a really weak-looking pass interference call early in the game on a pass was that to nuke um where like so the defender is entitled to go for the ball right 
and he goes for the ball. That was and, a bad one. That was a really bad yeah, one. Yeah, and because of that, Hopkins, it was Hopkins, right, runs yeah. into him, right? Yeah. So, well, he's entitled to be there if he's going for the ball. Like, you can't just say because there's contact of any description on the receiver, it's pass interference. So that extended a drive, gave them a shot. Um, like, and they had another penalty with the Kyle Hamilton thing, right, which that was a weird sort of three-play sequence that – really propelled them back into the game. They got the interception off Lamar Jackson. They then get the Kyle Hamilton um, ejection penalty. And then Derrick Henry goes in for a touchdown. And that propelled Tennessee like right back into the game from a position where because Baltimore keeps only taking field goals, like they're only a touchdown back. So, the yeah, those um, – the the two guys going for the ball thing, I don't, I don't love. I guess we'll talk about the refs later in this game in – the, in the show here. A couple hours from now when we get to Sunday night football. So the Ravens move to four and two, first place in the AFC North. They've got the Lions next week in a really fun matchup. Remember when teams used to travel to London, it was an automatic buy the next week. We're right. no longer in that world. So the Ravens have to come back and face a Super Bowl contender, Detroit Lions, next week. The Titans will go onto their buy. And we'll see what happens with Tannehill. And again, Malik Willis gets sacked four times in nine dropbacks. Like the Ravens were kind of winning up front and collapsing the pocket and everything. But this is, as you said, kind of standard fare for Malik Willis. Will Levis still exists over there. So we'll see theoretically what's happening in Tennessee coming out of the bye. But the season's not looking great so far. Two and four. And Ryan Tannehill hurt. Yeah. I mean, we've seen very little in his entire NFL career to suggest that Malik Willis can operate an offense in the NFL. Like the Titans took one look at it last year and were like, nope. And then in, you know, training camp and preseason this year, it's like it still doesn't really function. Like <laughs> This thing only works when Ryan Tannehill is the quarterback. And then as soon as Malik Willis comes in, nothing is functioning. Um, like he can throw. And when he has, it's like when he drops back, targets number one, just fires the ball, that, that works. But when he has to actually work the offense, not a chance. So if Will Levis can't get ahead of that guy on the depth chart, that's a really bad sign for Will Levis' NFL career. 